Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Hosea 13.5, I did know thee in the wilderness in the land of great drought. I knew you in the wilderness in the land of great drought. Let's get some context here. We'll go to the first verse. The Lord's relentless judgment on Israel. That sounds like a negative. It's not. He's judging them because they're his people. Judgment starts in the house of God and then goes out from there. We're the first. We're always the first to receive judgment before the rest of the world. That's a good thing. Verse 1, when Ephraim spoke trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended through Baal worship, he died. Now they sin more and more and have made for themselves molded, molded images. Idols of their silver, according to their skill. All of it is the work of craftsmen. They say of them, let the men who sacrifice kiss the calves. And that would be, a, a guess, because it's a, in quotations, it would be a saying that they had back then. See, they would make these calves for them to worship. It's funny, too, because there's a, a, a group here that makes custom barbecue pits. And they, make, they can make you anything uh, custom barbecue pit. Well, the one big one that they sell a lot of, and you see them all over Texas, is it's a great big barbecue pit, but it's a golden cow. It's a longhorn, but it's gold colored. I always found that interesting. And the first verse that uh, I remembered was the golden calf in uh, the Bible. How interesting. How, how full circle has that come? <laughs> and you know what the golden calf is. I mean, look up there on, um, in, in, on Wall Street. They have that giant bronze bull. I mean, bronze is a gold color. It's the same thing. It's, the golden calf is... The, the, the carnality of the world. The golden calf is physical things. The golden calf is money they, and mammon. You know, it, it's all the bad stuff that we spend too much time focusing on when we should be po focusing on something else. We're focusing on the Lord. Verse 3, Therefore they shall be like the morning cloud and like the early dew that passes away, like chaff blown off from a threshing floor and like smoke from a chimney. Yet I am the Lord your God ever since the land of Egypt. And you shall know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. What was interesting about Israel is that they were giving a, given a very specific set of regulations. He just quoted one of the Ten Commandments there, by the way. Very specific set of regulations, and they couldn't do that. Now, that, of course, that was by example. They've been blinded in part so that, you know, to give us room. The Lord will deal with them and bring them back, and then they'll know the truth. And how amazing that what we see happening, and in all of this right here, paints the same picture that's been painted over and over again, telling the same story across history. Verse 5, I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. When would that happen? That was Egypt. Remember, they had a drought where they couldn't even, they were making bricks out of clay. They couldn't even find stubble of grass to put in there to, to reinforce it. When they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. When things were good, they, they forgot about God. We do that too. When things are good, we forget about it. We forget to give thanks. That's the more important time to give thanks. So that we don't forget him. Verse 7, so I will be to them like a lion, like a leopard by the road I will lurk. I will meet them like a bear deprived of her cubs. I will tear open their rib cage, and there I will devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. Now, why would this be so descriptive? Well, he's making a point. Why would he tear open the rib cage to get to the heart? He's, God's going for their heart to try to fix their heart. Verse 9, O Israel, you are destroyed, but your help is from me. You want help? Here, here I am. Turn to me. Verse 10, I will be your king. Where is any other that he may save you in all your cities? And your judges to whom you said, give me a king and princes. That was in the book of Kings. I gave you a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is stored up. What's interesting, and then it goes on, verse 13 is really interesting because there's a lot of dots connected there. What's interesting is, is that no matter what Israel did, and this has always been throughout history, no matter what gods they followed, no matter how they agreed with anybody, they were always persecuted and under thumb. Even if they came into agreement 
with them. See, if a person who claims to be a Christian isn't a Christian, and they come into agreement with the world, the world accepts them. Why? Because they're not of God, they're of the world. But when a true born-again believer suddenly decides, you know what, I'm tired of fighting, and they give in, the world still doesn't accept them. I've been on the receiving end of that personally. That's the difference between a born-again Christian and not a born-again Christian. The world receives their own. They accept their own. They care for their own. They won't if you're not of the world. Israel wasn't supposed to be of the world, and every time they tried to go back, the world still attacked them. The world still destroyed them. If God took his hand off Israel right now, the whole world would wipe them out. If God had not been active, the or what is it, two weeks ago, and had his hand on Israel, they would have been obliterated. They're surrounded by enemies right now. The Bible said at the end they would be. Well, here they are. But they're still God's people. That's why he protects them. And no matter how much they may come into agreement with the world, he is still going to save those that are his. Period. End of discussion. Nobody's replaced them. Nobody's stood in their stead. He's still going to have his covenant people just like he promised. And that's a good thing because from them come our Savior. From them comes our Messiah. But he is their Messiah. So we bless them even if they're in, in error. We bless them because... They're the people God chose out of all the Gentiles of the world. He took Abraham and made this line from him. What a blessing it was. Even though they've turned against God, we have received a great blessing because of, because of what they've done and what they continue to do. But God will save them. He will save his people, just like he's going to save us. Yes, Lord, thou didst indeed know me in my fallen state, the land of drought. And thou didst even then choose me for thyself. When I was loathsome and self-abhorred, thou didst receive me as thy child, and thou didst satisfy my craving once. Blessed forever be thy name for this free, rich, abounding mercy. We do that in our prayers. We, we thank him for that. Since then, my inward experience has often been a wilderness, but thou hast owned me still as thy beloved and poured streams of love and grace into me to gladden me and make me fruitful. Yea, when my outward circumstances have been at the worst, and I have wandered in a land of drought, thy sweet presence has solaced me. Men have not known me when scorn has waited, awaited me. So, since we were, just, just like I just told you, he's actually talking about this very same thing. Men have not known me when scorn has awaited me, but thou hast known my soul in adversities, for no affliction dims the luster of thy love. The world wouldn't accept me, but you always did and always will. Most gracious Lord, I will magnify thee, or I magnify thee, for all thy faithfulness to me in trying circumstances. And I deplore that I should at any time have forgotten thee and been exalted in heart. When I have owed all to thy gentleness and love, have mercy upon thy servant in this thing. My soul, if Jesus thus acknowledge thee in thy low estate, be sure that thou own both himself and and his cause now that thou art in thy prosperity. Be not lifted up by worldly successes, so as to be ashamed of the truth or of the poor church with which thou hast been associated. One of the big things when people get money is they always forget where they came from. Don't ever forget where you came from. Don't ever forget how you were brought up. A lot of people forget they come up, they came up in poverty. They forget those people that were their friends and that helped them when they were down there. This happens all the time in sports, movie stars. They forget those. Now, there are some shining lights that haven't. Um, what is his name? Chow, Chow Young Fat. Or is it Chow Young Fat? I think it's him. Uh, he's starred in a bunch of movies. Uh, he was in the, I think the last one I saw him in was in Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, he allots himself like $200 a month to live on. He takes public transportation. He, he's, he goes out in public. He doesn't have bodyguards or anything. He, most of that money he earns, and he's, he was a billionaire. At one time, he gives it away. He helps other people with it. That's a man who remembers where he came from. That's a good thing. There's many others that are that way, too. Not as many as you would like, but there's some. Follow Jesus into the wilderness. Bear the cross with him when the heat of persecution grows hot. He owned thee. O my soul, in thy poverty and shame, never be so treacherous as to be ashamed of him. See, 
and our poverty and shame, he gave us what nobody else would, acceptance. Our friends and family wouldn't, but he did. Oh, for more shame at the thought of being ashamed of my best beloved, Jesus my soul cleaveth to thee. I'll turn to thee in days of light as well as nights of care. Thou brightest amid all that's bright, thou fairest of the fair. Even when things are good and even when things are bad, we need to turn to the Lord and remember him. When we're starting out, remember the Lord. When we're moving forward, remember the Lord. When we're enjoying the blessings he has poured out of us, remember the Lord. When things are rough, remember the Lord. From the wonderful uh, advances of spring, the plenty of summer, the leanness of fall and the coldness of winter, remember the Lord. No matter what it is, remember the Lord in every aspect of your life and in every opportunity. And I say this, and this is just me, when things are better, remember him more. Because that is when things can go very horribly wrong, is when he blesses us with much and then we forget about him. It happens. It happens. And every one of us has been that way. We must remind ourselves, remember the Lord. Write it in your Bible. When things are good, remember the Lord. When things are bad, remember the Lord. When things are great, especially remember the Lord. So that you will always be reminded of that. Find verses that talk about that. Mark them down. Make a list for them. These, these are specific verses that remind me, no matter what's happening in my life, I need to remember the Lord. Not just to ask him for stuff, but to praise him, to bless him, to, to give thanks to him. The fact that I'm actually able to function in this world is due completely to the full blessing of the Lord. On a personal note, for me, to do what I'm doing right now is only because of the blessing of the Lord. Otherwise, I couldn't do this. I promise you, I could not. It may not sound like it in the video. I could not. 90% of the time when I start a video, I don't have the words. The words come after the camera, after the recording starts. The words come as we go. You hear me pause a lot. Sometimes pause for a little while. I'm waiting for words. I'm waiting for the words to come from the Holy Spirit. Something that's going to be have, have a greater impact to speak. Something that's going to be glorifying to God to speak. But it's all because of him. I can't do this otherwise. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for him. What a blessing it is that the Lord bestows upon us. Let us constantly remember to give thanks and to praise him. To go to him for everything. When things are good and when things are bad. But let us never forget. He is our God. Just like he is Israel's God. And just like he cares for them. Even when they're disobedient, he does that for us too. So let us remember that and try not to be disobedient, but instead obey his word. Because what more blessings would come when he, we obey his word, when we do it his way, when we believe his way and his word and the way he gave it to us, instead of trying to do it our way. Our way is the wrong way. It always will be. We're wretched and poor and full of sin. We need him. And we need that reminder of that constantly. Lord, remind us of who you are. Remind us of your majesty. Remind us that your kingdom is coming. Remind us that you wrote this word. You call the shots. It is your way or no way, because your way is the best way, and that it will always be according to your will, no matter what. Make us to remember you when things are bad, but especially remember you when things are good, especially when things are very good. Take the time to stop and give thanks, to show our appreciation, to be obedient children. And not forget you when things are great. Not realizing that they're great because of you. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful blessings, your mercy, your grace, your great love, your free gift of salvation, for all the other blessings that we don't know about and that we haven't mentioned. Thank you for all of them. And we praise you and bless you. It is in your name, Lord Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. It is a true blessing to be called by the name of God. It's not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not easy. It's hard. Most days it's hard, especially nowadays when they're trying to go against Christians or trying to stop Christians. They're not going to. We're going to have a, a big push, rise, leap forward. 
but then all of a sudden everything's going to change. All of a sudden everything is going to change. And the rest of the world is going to know the mistake they made. And they're going to have to make a decision. God or the world? Many will turn to God. Many more. Most likely are going to turn the other way. The Lord will get those that are his. I, that I, of that I have no doubt. So let us always remember the blessings of our Lord calling us to salvation. And even when things are rough and tough, he's still our God. He's still there and it's still going according to his will. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I'll see you in the next video.